In 2020, a crack musician was sent to prison by child support court for a crime he didn't commit. This man promptly escaped from minimum security jail to the North Carolina underground. Today, still wanted by the government, he survives as a musician of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find him, you can watch Untethered with your host, Jake Johnson. Welcome to my mania. Hello, how are you? This is Jake Johnson coming to you from the North Carolina Underground. Let's see if anybody's watching yet. Oh, two people are here. What's happening, everybody? Good to see you. It's Manic Monday. Time to get crazy. You guys have a good weekend. Have a good Mother's Day. All the mothers out there flowered up and wined and dined and happy. Ah, nectar of the gods. Today we have my black beauty. She's a lovely thing. Hello, sis. Happy belated Mother's Day.
never coming back. Marshall Tucker for you right off the bat. <laughs> How's it hanging, world? Good to be here. Got us a nice fire going. The world's our oyster. And we suck snot. Yeah. Okay. Now, what would you guys like to hear? My scratchy little voice sing tonight. Anything in particular? Anything get you get your groove on? You want some country? You want some old southern rock? You want some blues? Some R and B? You just name it. You name it, and I'll bang it. Here's a little Kenny Chesney. Again.
colorful for my sister. That's from the movie Rock Stars by a group named The Verve Pipe. Kind of interesting. Whoa, I'm getting warmed up. Nectar of the Gods. I think I said that already. I'll do something, Guns N' Roses. How about that?
just for you. Richard died. Jerry Stiller died. into heaven. We're going to miss you. I'm old enough to remember when he had songs. A silly looking gay black guy with a little tiny mustache like my Uncle George had. Kind of made me wonder there. Never seen that kind of mustache on but two people and that was Little Richard and my Uncle George. See what we got here for you. Something that won't kill me. Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. I don't know who that song's about.
Right up the alley. Okay. Tell me a story. What you guys want to hear about? <laughs> It's looking like it's going to be a slow Monday. Holding strong at two. That's all right. People will watch it later. I'm here. You're here. They're there. It works out. <clears throat> By the way, the answer to the question is, I don't know, but you better listen when he's talking to you. Put that together and you'll have two points. song there. I wish I could remember it. So what you thinking? So sorry? Oh, so sorry. <laughs> you have the strangest text language I've ever seen. The past four texts are, sweet child of mine's also a good one. Yes. So sorry. Yay. I'm here. What's up, Grace Scott's Row? Jam and Jake. Good to see you. Good to see you. Is that three or two? Or one and a half? What do we got going on here? It's three. I'm up to suggestions. You guys want to hear something? I'll play it.
my friends When we all pile out of that county van The last me where I've been I was sitting down on the inside I was sitting down on the outside Hey Rachel, good to see you. You less sky troll with me. I have less sky troll here with me. Is that a who is that? Is that the little sky troll? Least sky troll. <laughs> Are you talking about a little one? That's what I'm assuming. Tell her I said hello and this is her great cousin Jake. Coming to her from the criminal underground. Okay. She 15 already? Wow. My daughter's 15 too.
is like one of those things, you know. <coughs> Does Ivy have a song she would like to hear? I'm feeling quite mischievous. But I don't know any Justin Bieber, so that's off the table.
six. She would play with pickup sticks. She was right and I was wrong. She never wanted to go home. Bang, bang. I shot her down. Bang, bang. She hit the ground. Bang, bang. My baby shot me down. some stuff like that. What do you think about that, buddy? That's some good stuff right there. Some Bill Shannon or somebody. Somebody like that. Pearl jamming with Dale Shannon, maybe? I don't know. I'm a star. You 
Lola. What if I know Lola? Is that that one? Uh... Lots of chick songs, but I don't know Lola. I know Allison. I know Melissa. I know uh, Darlene. Marie Laveau. Maria. Mm, lots of chick songs. That's a good thought experiment. See how many chick songs I know. <laughs> He said, I love you till I die. She told him you'll forget in time. As the years go slowly by, she still preyed upon his mind. Texting me the words to it? <laughs> I don't know the song. Words never stop me before. It's the lyrics that get me down. Pain. 
That was fun while it lasted. Where they drink champagne and it tastes like Coca-Cola. Hmm, I'm thinking there's some bad champagne. I do know some kinks, I just can't think of what it is. Are they the ones that do this song? Songs, I don't know. It's hard out here for a pimp. Okay, let's see if I can do something different here.
creation. We were talking about the ins and the outs and the do's and the don'ts and the ups and the downs and the ins and the outs. And what we discovered was somebody is not telling the truth. And it ain't me. Because nothing can explode into something that's not possible. The laws of thermodynamics prevent things from creating because everything tends towards chaos. If you don't believe me, just look in the mirror. And a star exploding, providing that a star got there in the first place, cannot create all of the baser elements that everything is made of. They can only produce two elements. That's helium and hydrogen. All of the other elements, iron and everything else, they have no idea where that comes from. When they throw out these big numbers like 13.5 billion years ago, that 0 .5 is a dead giveaway that they're lying to you because they don't have a damn clue when this occurred or how it occurred. Never have, probably never will. So, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, that's obvious. The chicken came first because you can't lay an egg without a chicken. Chicken had to be fully formed and fully grown because a baby chicken can't lay an egg and a baby chicken can't grow until adulthood so it can lay an egg without starving to death. It has to have something to eat so plants had to be here before the chicken was. It's exactly what the book says. On the first day, plants. On the second day, animals. 
on the third day sunlight now how did sunlight get here if the first words were let there be light well there's all kinds of light there's electromagnetic light there's ultraviolet light there's infrared light there's uh, all kinds of light I'm doing this off the top of my head so I can't remember all the particulars so don't 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 fault me for getting old. Just check me out and see if I'm wrong. I'm not. <clears throat> so, then this guy on TV says, well, the Bible contradicts itself because creation is mentioned twice. It says God created male and female, and then a few chapters later it says God created male and female. Now, how's that? How's creation happen twice? The Bible's a lie. Well, that's very simple. The first time it's mentioned in the ancient Greek, it says, Eth ha Adam, which is Greek for a man. The second time it says, Adam, which is Greek for the man. See, there, see the difference? Those are men. This is a specific man. Okay? It also says, right after creating sunlight that God created male and female and he put them in the earth. That's all the people. And then he created a garden. On the eighth day he created Adam and Eve. So those are specific people. He called them husbandmen. If you know what a husbandman is, it's a person who artificially inseminates cattle or aids in the assistance of birthing animals so forth. That's what a husbandman is and that's very important. Remember that word. If you have any knowledge of the Bible then you know that it uses constantly agricultural, farming, and horticultural references. It talks a lot about vines, it talks a lot about plots of land, it talks a lot about those sort of things in reference to other things. It's basically illustrating something so that a dummy can understand what he's being said because the dummies knew how to grow stuff and and live that way and when somebody's talking over their head the best way to tell them what they're saying is is to say it in a parable that's why all of that language is used in the Bible <clears throat> so now God creates the garden eastward in Eden or Eridu if you want to get historical uh, so he creates this place and in this place he puts two trees these trees are metaphorical they're not literal trees they are Jesus Christ and Satan, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Both of these trees are mentioned in the Bible. That's Jesus Christ, that's Satan. God says of the tree of life, you can do whatever you want. You can have as much as you want. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't touch it, don't look at it, don't taste it, don't think about tasting it. Stay away from it. It's bad news. Because the minute you taste it, you're going to die. Well, death means something different to God than it means to man. Man sees death as finality, sees it as the end of his life. God sees death as a transition from this plane into that plane. That plane for which you can't get unless you die here. You can't get there from here. Your flesh can't enter that realm. So you have to die in order for your spirit to move forward. So you're not dead. When you die, you're not dead. You're just in another place. And you can't get here, and here can't get there. It's two separate places. Remember when I talked about God was outside of time because he created time, which means he can see time as a whole. He can see the beginning of it and the end of it and the middle of it and all the parts in between, whereas we're in time. We have to experience it linearly. We can remember back. We can guess to the future, but we can only exist today, right now, Oh, that time's gone. We can only exist today. Right now, oh, that time's gone. We can only exist. You see what I'm saying? You only exist in this moment. Every other moment is either memory or fantasy. That's how we have to experience time in flesh bodies. But God, who created time, which is on the outside of time and space and matter, can see all of it at once. That's why he said, I knew you before you were born. I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. I knew you before the foundations of the earth. These things are all mentioned because those foundations weren't there when he put them there. 
That's why he, why he can see all of that. Now, in this garden we got two trees. Jesus Christ, Satan. Then we got two people. Adam and Eve. First we had just Adam. But that wasn't good enough. Adam needed something else. So here comes Eve. God's plan, which is not written in the Bible, you have to infer this. If you think I'm wrong, you're welcome to check me out on it and find out and tell me how wrong I am. God's plan was for Adam and Eve to birth the spirit of Jesus into this world and everything be perfect in a garden made of perfection. That's why Satan intervened. Satan would not have intervened had God not had the plan to make everything perfect. If you'll notice in the Bible, every time Satan pops his head up, every single time is to interrupt a plan that's in motion from God. He started in the Adam and Eve era. He showed up again in Jesus Christ's time just before he started his ministry. He shows up again at the end of the world in the form of the Antichrist. All of these things are moments that are just before something happening. Now that bloodline had to be pure. It had to be Adam and Eve's blood, which is basically one blood, because remember she's taken from him, which means she shares his DNA. So it's one pure blood. Well, it took a long time to get that bloodline back together because Satan seduced Eve. It means he had sex with her. Oh, I know the Christians hate that. They're like, oh no, Jake. There's no sex in the Bible. Oh, yes, there is. And Satan, in the form of the snake or however you want to see it, had sex with Adam and Eve together as a menage a trois. People don't like to think about that, but Cain was not Adam's son. How do I know that? He's not mentioned in Adam's genealogy, for one thing. He's not there. Abel isn't there either because Abel was murdered before he had children, so he would not have been in a, in a genealogy. They were also paternal twins. I'm, I'm sorry, they were maternal twins. They had the same mother. They had two separate fathers. Now, I know you think that's not possible, but ask your doctor. It's called parthenogenesis, and it is absolutely possible. It happens more in dogs than it happens in people, but it does happen. Now, if you can imagine, if the first DNA that was created would be the perfect DNA, all the good stuff, none of the bad stuff, and then you make a copy of 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 a copy on down the line to us now, you could see how a copy degenerates over time. You can do this with a Xerox machine. You can make a copy of a pristine document, and 10,000 copies later, you can barely read it. Well, the same thing happens with DNA, and every generation that moves forward loses a little of something that it had before. It doesn't get better. It doesn't evolve. It devolves towards chaos because that's the laws of thermodynamics. Now, if that DNA was perfect, then they would have had no problem committing parthenogenesis because it would have been easy for their DNA to just make that happen. They had perfect DNA. There was nothing obstructing it. Anything's possible. Anything goes. So, Adam and Eve had sex with Satan. Out pops two children. One named Cain. One named Abel. Eve says, This is my son from God. Jesus says later on that he would put enmity between Satan's seed and the man's seed. There's only one thing that means. that semen. that sperm. And the enmity was Cain. He was talking back. He was hearkening back to that moment when he said that. That he would put enmity between the, the Satan's seed and the man's seed. That's Cain. Right? He also called a man who was a descendant of Cain. He said, you are of your father the devil. Well, how, what does father mean? Well, it can either mean father, grandfather, great-grandfather, or something to that effect. Master of the house, maybe. But in this case, it meant father, because that's who he was talking to. He was talking to a Kenite. If you know who those people are, you can do a little research and find out who they are. And in this case, they were the Pharisees mentioned in the Bible. They were descendants of Cain. 
who had many children who built cities and were the uh, they were very handy people they built lots of things <clears throat> matter of fact you could say that civilization started because of the people he bore throughout life like real civilization like cities and stuff because they built cities one of his children was even killed in a city uh, a wall falling down and killing them that's not in the Bible that's in a history book but if you know who you're reading about then you understand how that all fits together so Cain has the devil's seed in him his, his desires his heart Abel has God's heart in him because Abel is the firstborn of Adam who was created directly by God Adam is the only person to ever directly be created by God. Everyone else in the world was born under woman. Adam is the only one who was directly created by God from this family. The other people that are in the earth at this time were also created by God, but they're the only ones. Everyone else born of woman. Now, why did he create Adam? Because he needed a bloodline so that Jesus could come through. That was the whole plan. Jesus is the guy who's supposed to rule the world. He's the king. King of kings and priests of priests. So he has to get here somehow. So he created Adam. Now, you have to understand that some time has passed already. This is on the eighth day of creation, which God knows how long that was. But people had already set up shop. There was already villages and cities and people living about the world at this time when they had their first two children. Their next child was Seth. Seth is who Jesus comes through. They also had daughters, but they don't mention them by name. So God knows how many daughters they had. But Seth is the family line that Jesus is going to come through. But it took from Seth all the way to Heli, which is Mary's father, who was a full-blooded king of Judah. There's 12 tribes. One of them is Judah, and one of them is Levi. And Heli was a full-blooded Judean. And the woman he married, Maria, was a full-blooded Levite from the second tribe. Full-blooded. And those two DNAs, full-blooded king, full-blooded priest, came together and Mary was born. That's why God found favor in Mary. Not because she was a hot little teenager, but because she had perfect DNA. That the bloodlines had come back together and this DNA was perfect. This was the first time since Adam and Eve that this was possible. So he overshadowed her and she became pregnant with Jesus. Pops Satan right back into the picture right then. Right? And then again when, he was a, when he's a grown man. And probably several times as he was growing up. And then again when he was getting crucified. You could say that Barabbas was Satan. I don't know that that's true, but the word Barabbas means rock. And you can transliterate that to the king of the rock, which is Tiberius, or uh, excuse me, Tyrus, who was Satan. It's mentioned in the Bible. And uh, Satan is no known as the god of this world in the Bible. He rules the air. He is the prince of the air, meaning that he controls this earth. That is his penance for what he did before all of this began. And we'll talk about that some other time. That's the overthrow that happened in heaven that caused Satan to fall to the earth. We'll talk about that some other time when we're talking about angels and stuff, when we get into the book of Enoch and stuff like that. But right now we're talking about the Garden of Eden, so all this is pertinent to that. So thing you have to understand is Eve was tricked. Satan talked her right out of her panties or her fig leaf or whatever it was she was doing. He talked her right out of it. Adam was not tricked. He knew full well what he was doing. He knew it was a sin and he did it anyway. Which is why death entered into this world and why we have to pay such a penance. Both male and female. Women are not the only ones that have to pay for that. Men do too. Men have to toil and till the ground and beat our heads against rocks and sweat and bleed and die and all that stuff. Women have to have a menstrual cycle and have painful childbirth 
all because of this event. Why is that that way? Why did they sew fig leaves and cover their private parts if they ate an apple? Wouldn't they cover their mouth if they ate an apple? They didn't eat an apple. The apple is the apple of the eye. It is a metaphor for childbirth. What they did was have sex, and then they were ashamed, and they covered their privates, hoping God wouldn't notice. That's the whole reason for the fig leaves. It wasn't because they were naked. It's because they were sticky. I mean, come on. We're talking about medieval sex here. They didn't have no Irish spring. They didn't have no showers. It's nasty. They did the nasty. They didn't want God to find out, but they did it, and he did, and he punished them, banished them right out of the garden, caused them both to die spiritually, not physically. Both of them lived long lives. Now, why is this important? Because at that point in time, God only had one rule. Do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Don't take in the knowledge. What did, God, what did Satan say? Take it. You'll be just like God. You'll know what God knows. You'll have what God has. As soon as you eat this fruit, your eyes will be open. The scales will fall off. Just out of curiosity, have you noticed the logo of Apple computers? The bitten apple? Have you noticed how many times they mention things like, you know, artificial intelligence, AI, being as smarter than humans? Well, who's smarter than humans? God is. That's what they're attempting right now. In this day and time, they're attempting the very thing that was talked about in the Bible, knowing what God knows, having the same capabilities as God. That's not for man. No one ever said we couldn't do it. Capable, I mean. We're not capable of it. God just said, don't do it. The big folly of man is thinking that he wants to be God. He wants to know God. He wants to outdo him. That's what the Tower of Babel was all about. That's what modern day is. That's what the space race was about. It was about getting up there with God and seeing Earth like God. You can't be God. Because you didn't create the world. Does that mean man can't create life? No, it doesn't. Does that mean man should not create life? That's correct. You should not mess with that game. You shouldn't play that game. It's not your business. Your business is to live and die and make a choice. The whole purpose for mankind to be on this earth is to make a choice. Follow God or follow Satan. It's as simple as that. There is no other reason. And you can make it as complicated as you want to, but you'll die just the same. You'll live just the same, and the same shit will happen to you. You have to make a choice. Sooner or later, you'll make it, whether it's made by you or it's made by the big guy upstairs. You had the time to do it, is what I'm saying. You were given the time. Instead of destroying you, you were given the time. You think, well, he destroyed us once before. Well, you're still here, aren't you? So he didn't destroy us all. He destroyed what was being created that was not his creation. He saved mankind to rebuild and keep going because that is his creation. So that's a little tidbit into the Garden of Eden and I'm going to stop there. I'll catch you guys next time when we talk about the Tower of Babel and the movement of mankind as they move through history from that point. Please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, if you feel overwhelming urges to help the guy survive, paypal.me slash Jake Johnson Band or follow one of the links in the description. Yeah, I can talk. Follow one of the links in the description below. And I will see you guys on Wiley Wednesday. Have a good night. Peace out. God bless you. Weather the storm. <laughs>